Thanks, Hello. Hello, Mikhail. Hi. How are you? Very good, thank you. Good, good. Some in injury updates at Thomas Party finally seeing in a squad? Uh, we've got a late, some late decisions to make. Um, Thomas won't be one of those, um, but we have a few. That obviously we had some issues at the end of last game, and, um, and we're still uncertain with a few players. So it won't be a late decision for Thomas. Does that mean that he is in the squad? Thomas is not in the squad. No. Oh, okay. Disappointed? Well, it's what it is. You want everybody available, and he's a top player for us, really important player for us. But at the moment, he's not fit yet. And those late decisions, is one of them Declan Rice? It is one of the, the players, yes. And what are the chances? Is he racing against time? <laughs> he's done some uh, some work, uh, but he's missed some work as well. But um, but hopefully he's going to be OK. Uh, uh, and Gabriel, I guess, will be another one. Yeah, that's another one, yeah. So back to Thomas, is he likely to be involved, do you think, uh, for the Liverpool game? We will see. We will see how things evolve and um, and if that's too short or that's OK. So I'm not going to, I know there's only a few days left in the transfer window, it all seems pretty quiet, so I'm not going to ask about uh, any ins, but mm. on outs, uh, are you leaving the club in the summer? Who, me? <laughs> no, that's totally fake news, why you read yesterday is, I don't know where it's coming from, and uh, it's totally untrue, I'm really upset about it. When you heard the report, I guess you were trying to relax on a... On a Sunday evening, mm. what, was your, what was your reaction? I could not believe. I don't know where it's coming from. And it has no source. It's got nothing. And uh, I think we have to be very cautious when you talk about um, personal things, so to put it in the way that um, it was put yesterday. You've got unfinished business here, quite clearly. Mm. I'm in the right place. I'm with the right people. I feel really good about it. And um, as I said many times, we are. I'm immersed in a beautiful journey with this football club, with these players, the staff, our people, and uh, and there is still a lot, a lot to do. I guess people, wrongly, somebody over there was adding two and two together and making seven. Mm. The fact that you know, Xavi is leaving in the summer, your association with Barcelona, yeah. is that a compliment to you in a way? But that's something that uh, we cannot control. This is part of football. But that's something very different to someone putting in a statement about something that I'm doing. That's very, very different. And uh, the other one is just part of football and this industry. That's it. Obviously, your contract does run out in 18 months' time or so. I know everyone's very relaxed. The board's with you, you're with the board. There's no rush to talk about a new contract. But is that something that might put these rumours to bed? I don't know. I think I've got a extraordinary relationship uh, with the board, with Edu, with team, with ownership, and um, and things come in a in a natural way. And we always done it that way, and it worked out really well. And when the time is right, we would have those discussions and um, I think about the best way to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Got a nip from Hi. After the sorry, after the three defeats in a row, did you feel that the type of performance and the result, the reaction you got against Palace, is a matter of time? Well, yes, because when the team performs the way we did and, and we lose games, uh, I was hoping that uh, it could not carry out the way it did. But this is football and, uh, and it can still happen. But, um, but I was very confident that uh, it was coming because I could see the team, the way it was playing, performing, how upset and angry they were not to, to have what we deserved. And, uh, and as well, it was, I think, a motivation as well to, after the break, put it right and, and get back on track. Looking at Nottingham Forest tomorrow, you had roughly 10 days to prepare. They had significantly less. They have plenty of players involved in the AFCON. Do you think Do you see an advantage from your point of view? I see. I, I, we can manage and optimize our preparation, and this is uh, what we have tried to do against a team that uh, I know they manage really well. It's going to be extremely competitive. We have some really bad experiences over there in the last two seasons, uh, so we're going to have to be really good to beat them. I want to ask you about the Martinelli, the two goals that he scored uh, against Palace recently. How important are they for his confident levels and also for the team to offer him the right support to carry on doing it in a consistent manner? Absolutely. Sharing the goals, we, we said that it is really important, but there is the individual, is the me and, uh, and the confident and, and, um, and taking some anxiety away from it and, and actually scoring two beautiful goals like we did, I think is going to make him uh, a lot of positive things. I want to ask you about Jorgen Klopp, please. Um, the announcement he shared recently. No. How do you think Jorgen not only changed Liverpool as a club, but the whole Premier League as a competition? Mm. Well, I think he's made this league much better. I think um, 
first of all, the person, the, the character, the charisma, uh, the way of transmitting his ideas and his passion for the game is something special. And I think um, I think he's had a, a big contribution for the growth of, of this league. Um, and then I love the way he did it, you know, uh, the emotion that he put it. And when you see a human side explaining the reasons behind it and, and the challenges and and everything that goes related to our job, um, I think it was a spot on. And um, I think when someone is done what he's done for that football club, for the league, you have to respect that and, and basically say thank you because I think it made the league better, it made every manager better, and it made this league uh, much more beautiful and intense. Mikel, you talk about the personal <coughs> side of having to be a manager with, with Jurgen Klopp leaving Liverpool. Obviously, he's been there eight, nine years. Arsene Wenger was here for over two decades. Is it harder now to be, be a manager at a successful club in the Premier League than it, it ever was under Wenger or Fergie? Well, I cannot respond to that question. I, I used to speak with Arsene and he took his job like we all do, you know, and, and we put so many hours and we put our lives to it and, and over an energy. And, and sometimes you feel that uh, that you don't have it anymore. You know, it can happen when you are a player, when you do any job. And as a manager, um, you have to be very cautious managing that energy and, and your time and, uh, and how much you invest on that because uh, it is extremely demanding. Um, I love it, and I'm young, and I have a lot of energy, but I understand that after so many years, I think with Jorgen it was 24 years um, doing a different job in different countries, it's, um, it's something that naturally happens. But you're also high energy, high intensity, mm. so how do you keep going every week, every month, every season, mm. back to be able to get to that, that level again? I think because I love what I do, you know, and I love every minute and and I get a lot of joy with uh, waking up every morning and, and knowing that I have to drive to Colney and I'm going to meet these people, I'm going to spend time together and we're going to prepare to be better for the next day. And, uh, and that's what it drives you. It drives you when you feel respected, when you feel loved as well, when, when you see a clear direction and ambition, what you want to do as a club and as a team. And, uh, and this is where we are right now. When you were talking about that, the fake rumors of you going to Barcelona just now. You mentioned the word, you said you were angry. Mm. Were you angry because somebody had put that story out there? Or were you mm. angry because you have such a close relationship with the fans, you didn't want them to think, oh, I've read that, it must be true? Yeah, but one is a consequence of the other. First of all, because I'm really cautious um, about when I talk publicly uh, about my personal things. And and when someone puts a statement saying something that I say or did, um, it is upsetting. I understand that we are in this industry. And the second one, because I don't think no one deserves to hear that uh, in, a, in, in news like that. And, uh, and I've always been really straight and, and I always said completely the opposite, how happy I am, how grateful I am and how much I enjoy uh, where I am right now. So that's, that's the reason why I'm upset. And finally, we're now over the winter break, as it were. It's full blast pretty much towards the end of the season. You've talked before about being in a traffic jam on the motorway in, in terms of the top of the table. Um, how are you How are you going to get to top gear and be full in top gear between now and May? Mm. Well, we've been that for the first six months. We've been there. Uh, there were moments we were second, third, fourth. We were first as well for periods just before Christmas or during Christmas. And, and now we have to catch up. And the best way to do it is continue to play how we're playing. Get results, get momentum, and put back to work uh, victories. And and at the moment, it doesn't depend on us, you know. But uh, there is still so much football to play. Mark and Pierre. Hi, Michael. You mentioned Hi. a couple of times how you feel you're in the right place at, the, at this club, and I know you've said that in the past as well. Do you, do you feel then that you have still unfinished business here, given you took them from eighth in your first season to, to second and challenging? Mm -hmm. You're still not finished here at all. There is a lot to do here okay. as well, and uh, and we all share that ambitions, and you can feel it as well, that we want more, that we're not satisfied, and and the club wants to take uh, um, again another push and another level in everything that we are doing, and and this is where we are, and we need everybody on board to achieve it, and and I'm certainly on board. And then just just a quick one on on the contracts. Have you had any discussions yet about? about no, we haven't, but this is something that it would happen naturally when it has to happen, if it has to happen, and, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mikhail. Just on you wanting, I guess, everyone wanting to make another push with the club, I was just wondering, with a lot of it being your work, 
this is your team, I think we can see that. How proud has that made you over the past four years to make that kick on yourself? Yeah, well, I always felt that um, it was our team, it was my team, because when you when you make the decision to, to coach, to manage a team, a club, you have to make those players your own. It's the same with the staff, you know, it's not players that they sign another manager, you make them your own, you try to maximize as you want. We have two years of very difficult COVID situation that we cannot forget. And uh, and then my job become more normal within the complexity of the situation that we have, much more normal and, and doable, hopefully. and. Uh, and I'm enjoying it a lot, and I feel that we are in the right track. But again, I think we are still very far. With what I, with my vision, is that where this club and, and this team has to be. You mentioned those COVID years. Did that almost make the group even stronger because it was so un or irregular? I don't know. We navigate some difficult moments and, and challenges that we have through COVID. Um, I think in a really powerful way, and hopefully. My belief is that that created emotionally a really strong attachment and belief um, that that we were the right people to take the club forward, you know. And I think it happened for a reason, and I think uh, we used it in the right in the right way. Okay. I'm Carl. Hi. David and Rafael, so obviously with Jurgen leaving, there might be a bit of a, a mess of a rival at the top, and the club basketball is so settled now. You're settled. The squad is relatively settled, even though you said there's obviously improvements that can be made. Above you is settled. Do you feel maybe you're in a good position now to, with Liverpool, maybe going through a period of transition, Chelsea transition, Man U transition? Do you think maybe you look at the league and you think, well, we could possibly go on to dominate this year or maybe the years to come? <laughs> we don't know. I think we can't. Uh, we can take care of our own business. We've got a lot here uh, still to do, and um, and what others do, we don't know. Sometimes they sign new managers. They have really great impact straight away. And we have some cases in this league that happened in the past. And sometimes, as you said, need some transition. We cannot control it. Let's focus on what we can do. Okay, James. Yeah, yeah. Right, when, Hi. Um, Jurgen Klopp announced he was stepping down. He said that he could never manage another club in England because of the. Relationship you had with Liverpool. I just wondered, obviously, you're younger, but you've had a four years here as a manager, five as a player. Do you ever see yourself managing another club in England? Today, no. But I don't know. I play for for two great clubs in this country. Uh, I moved around in in different thing in different things. I'm extremely young, and um, and I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen.